make some noise. Actor Deputy makes some noise. And last but not least, I want to hear the Teamsters make some fucking noise. how strong we are. See, the AMPTP has a plan, all right? Carol tells the CEOs how it's gonna go. She says, don't worry about it. The writers will go on strike. I'll hold them off for a couple weeks. You can go back to your yachts and worry about your real problems like being attacked by orcas, okay? <laughs> but guess what? Carol didn't plan for how strong we are. She did not. She did not plan for the fact that eight weeks in, we are bringing the same energy as on day one. That's she didn't plan that our picket lines are being joined by workers from every union in town. We have walked with janitors, with housekeepers, with teachers, with strippers. We have union strippers. unsustainable peace, with our pay held hostage for multiple three rewrites so that our employers can pay us as little as possible for the very work that will make them record-breaking profits. The combined revenue of the eight companies at the AMPTP table last year was $1.3 trillion. $1.3 trillion. And it would cost them less than a quarter of a single percent to restore sustainability to the writer's career in Hollywood. But what the studios value more than money is power. To allow writers to share in the profits of our work would mean sharing the power the studios forge so desperately. And to the AMPTP, power is a cause worth fighting for. Employees are not. This tale of the employee working more to get paid less than ever before is the plight of every Hollywood worker now, despite the ever-increasing profits of our studios. That is why all Hollywood unions are standing here today, shoulder to shoulder. And just to take a moment, it is, it is, Pretty fucking cool standing up here in front of you and looking at all of these faces here today. We here see the existential crisis that threatens the livelihoods of all Hollywood workers and beyond. Until the existence of the writer's room is codified. 
modified into our contract. We are going to stay out here until comedy variety and daytime writers have the same protections in streaming that we've had on cable and broadcast for the past 50 fucking years. We are going, we are going to keep our pencils down and our picket signs up until the CEOs stagger back from the marina. Their clothes in tatters, their skin covered in orca bites. And they come back to the table and make a fair deal. That is when the strike will end and not one day sooner. And until then, we are going to be out here every day, building momentum, getting stronger. Every single day we get stronger. So when I say one day stronger, one day longer, I want you to say one day stronger, okay? One day longer. We have a shuttle back to Guild Headquarters at 6th and the crosswork at Spalding at the entrance to the park running every 15 minutes. And please return your picket signs at the designated location when you're exiting the park so we can use them next time on the picket line. And once again, if you need ASL interpretation, right down here. Are you guys ready for an amazing program? The first speaker I'm bringing up to you today is a very good friend of mine. She's a board member of the Writers Guild of America West. She is an absolute rock star. Please give it up for Liz Alper, everybody. Thank you. 